Well, I'm Joan Clunan and uh, long retired from Simplot and I don't know that my history has anything to do with what I'm doing now, having been a PhD chemist and a lawyer and uh, a lobbyist and what have you, and, and having tried running for uh, the state legislature a few times and failed. And after failing one time, I ended up working with uh, a group of refugees who were all from Bhutan. And I had some questions earlier about how can there possibly be refugees from Bhutan, this wonderful, lovely place which has an index of happiness and uh, is a lovely place to be. And they can be. Uh, they were Nepalese, ethnically Nepalese people who had lived in Bhutan for generations and were thrown out in about maybe 25 years ago. The Bhutanese government sa said, and of course there's all sorts of politics involved around this, but Bhutanese government said, if you can't show us the, the official papers that show that you legally own this land, then you don't, and you're out. And like I say, it, it was a uh, uh, fairly violent type uh, 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 exodus, and they tried to go to India, and they ended up uh, go, and ended up in Nepal with the Nepalese government saying, "Sorry, you're Bhutanese, and we don't have room for you anymore." Uh, and in living in uh, refugee camps in Nepal for uh, the people we ha who came to us were 17 to 20 years. So that's that's the group that sort of got this whole thing started with knitting and with sewing. And some friends of mine, uh, some friends and I started Artisans for Hope in well, the summer of 2009. We. Uh, are a group that is teaching skills in the textile area, sewing, knitting, and some we do some other things. We have workshops on other things. We're a community center where students can come and learn about the community more, meet people, feel safe. It's a safe place for people, and we as I say, do textile training and a little training in business. We train uh, and w we sell the products. We sell knitted items, scarves, hats, uh, sewn items, tote bags. We've done uh, bags, uh, con 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 ah, convention bags for a few few things. So anyhow, we, we are teaching and offering a place where they can learn English. We teach English as a second language. And uh, as part of the teaching, I'm gonna skip that. The people who come who have not, who are not uh, fully, you know, have a lot of sewing skills. Some people really don't uh, know sewing at all when we're starting, some do. But they all go through a, uh, evaluation and training of what we call level one. And level one, we teach how to sew a straight line. And here's some quilts, those, the first quilts that those, uh, and these women are all from Bhutan, uh, first quilts that they made. And they're lovely, and people liked doing quilts. And then we, uh, some more, there's this example, I, I think seeing pictures of the people working on them is really helpful. The, it was a great exercise and they learned, learned the skills, not only how to sew a straight line, but how to sew, make corners, have the meeting, and learn, learn some things. And along the way, we decided as part of the learning experience that everyone was given a blank doll, doll shape, and asked to make a doll showing how they saw themselves. And these, this is some, shows some of them, some of the 
examples of how they saw themselves. And it was very interesting to see how people, and uh, even the um, instructors made them, and I made one, and someone commented on this, because I think it, it's an example of how you do see yourself. I, I made one where I was in a black shirt and a scarf and flowered pants, and I had one of the uh, instructors said, I've never seen you in flowered pants. I said, that's okay, it's how we see ourselves. Maybe they're there. <laughs> and uh, so we, we put that into a quilt, onto a quilt, which was also produced by a combination of the students and the, and the uh, volunteers as to how we see ourselves. And we've used that, we used that quilt for a couple years to take around and say, look, this is, these are our students. These are our, these, these are, this is us. And this quilt, unfortunately, is, uh, has been, uh, was burned up. It was one that was destroyed in a fire in last Labor Day weekend in Boise at the International Market. Uh, it was among 13 of the story cloths that we have. But out of that, we made some more quilts. We made more images of ourselves. A second quilt, which is now at a, a local clinic, and had a growing, people were more interested in doing pictures, pictures out of fabric. And so we started to, uh, one of the first ones, let's see if I, the right button. Here is Bima, who is from uh, Bhutan, and she did a picture of herself in front of the green fields and mountains where she grew up. And we continued to experiment with having the, we did a little experiment with the uh, students making drawings of where they grew up and uh, then translating it into cloth. Our, um, here's the first ones. They're rather primitive, and I think there's one or two that are out here in the exhibit. We've, again, we've lost some of them. We lost that middle one, this middle one that Bima did. And we, we said, well, this is, uh, we showed this at the Conference of Ref on Refugees, and uh, the Stevens' predecessor at uh, the Commission on the Arts saw them and said, these are wonderful. This is great, great art, great folk art, and we should do more. So the Commission on the Arts was very supportive and, and uh, gave us, whoops, gave us the help of a woman whose name is Malia Collins, who is a writer and a teacher, and just very, very good at interviewing the refugees, whether she knew the language or not, and uh, getting help on that. And translate, got the stories, and helped us. We all worked together with our students to translate the stories into pictures which could be translated into fabrics. And most of our fabrics, by the way, are donated. We, we live on donations of fabric, yarn, and uh, whatever supplies we can get, although we do get some grants. But, but Malia worked with us and we started making quilts. And some, uh, uh, some of this, the stories come to life. And the, the idea was that we would have three, each person would do three quilts, which was a little bit too ambitious, all things considered. But each person would do three quilts, one showing the good, the good memories, where I came from. The second showing the transition, maybe the refugee camp or some, some incident or something like that. And the third one showing life in the new home, their new home, usually life in Boise. 
So this show, the, these pictures are showing them working on the quilts, and it was, they loved doing these. Bima did one early on that showed all three in one. The first from the left goes to, from Bhutan to the right, to the middle is uh, that little building at the bottom is supposed to represent the uh, bamboo and uh, plastic tarp type house, we'll call it a house, that she lived in in the refugee camp. And the right-hand side, uh, Boise, the blue is the clean river. That's what she said, the, she loved the clean river in, in Boise. The second round of Bema's uh, quilts show, and the, the top left one again is one that has been lost in the fire, but that was where she talked about making, in, in Bhutan, making clothes for her, her family and how much she loved to do that and how it made them just look like flowers out, out in the, around the house. In, in the, and she talked about fields of cardamom and flowers and things around there. So those were her good memories. The second one um, here is the transition. She left Bhutan with her father, her two mothers, and 18 siblings. And they were all thrown out of Bhutan and they crossed the river and went into Nepal. And when she left Nepal for the United States, she left with her husband and four children. And uh, when she came to the United States, she said the, th the third one on the right, there's a picture of her and her family. And that is a yellow bus in the background there. She said, you know, when I saw my children go on the bus and watched them get on the bus, you know, happily on the bus, I knew I was home. I knew I was an American. And she's now an American citizen. Her, she and her family are all American citizens. And she talks about, and many do, I did not have a country for over 20 years. I had no country. I ha as a refugee, she had no home. Now, this shows she did. And doing the project, I think, ha allowing people to express themselves in a beautiful way has been very therapeutic as well. So, so that's how these came, came about, is with the help of, and we did two phases of these. The first phase we had uh, exhibited for a while in Boise and uh, then did the second phase. And not all of the ones that were in the Capitol, we don't have all the ones that were in the Capitol. We had uh, 25 there and we had 18 that we could send here uh, because we lost, as I say, the, the ones that were lost, I had taken pictures of everything and we, we made them into posters so the, on the second floor, the posters are the lost quilts. And, uh, whoops. That's the second one that Bima did. And what I, incorporating all three phases into one, one quilt, I think what I like most about it is that heart, the red, white, and blue heart. I find that Many of the people will express that they, they appreciate what we have in the United States more than most anybody else I know. We take things so for granted. And they see the safety, the opportunity, and maybe not opportunity only for themselves, but for their children. And I think when you hear Maria talk about her children, you, you'll understand. So. That, we've done a little photo journal and we we're doing this and one of, I'm gonna stop here and just say one of the techniques that Malia used was 
to, to ask them, tell me what I was formed by. And so much comes from, you know, the things they're doing, the, 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 their family, and it, you see it in the stories. And they, in one of the other books, I had the poem, and I don't think I, I, I didn't bring copies here. I, I gave them all away this morning. I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm going to go back to this, stop here, and introduce you to Maria, who's going to talk about her quilt and her experiences. Maria is from Afghanistan, and uh, I'm going to, if you just bear with me for a minute while I scan through a bunch of pictures of many of the Things and I'm stopping here only because this woman from from Somalia did a uh, did this quilt, which depicted her son's her son was a medical doctor, and he and other graduates of the medical school were celebrating, and their school was bombed, and she lost her son, and this is to illustrate that. And uh, the little bumps on the side are, are the bush. She lived in the bush for many, for a long time. She lost her son, then later lost her husband. And, uh, and you'll see her story in there. But, but I, I want to explain what the bush is because she talks about living in the bush. And they are, are sort of like bamboo huts with no doors on the front. And that's where she lived. And, uh, before she was able to uh, leave and get to Kenya and eventually to the United States. That's her waiting in Kenya. So, But that's how our story cloth project came about. It sort of grew from showing what how they saw themselves, how we see ourselves, to illustrating their stories. And Maria, there is yours. Would you like the pointer? Okay. Yeah. Yes. And is your microphone on? Uh, yes. You, you have a microphone, so you don't have to stand there. You can move around. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Maria. I'm from Afghanistan. Uh, I came in Boise in uh, 2000, uh, July, uh, Ju uh, 2000 in July. Came in uh, Boise. I live in Boise right now. And uh, before I um, I have in Afghanistan. I have a bachelor degree from uh, uh, chemistry. I was a teacher in Afghanistan and Pakistan too. Uh, I teach high school, and uh, after came in Boise, I hold uh, uh, for ten years. I hold all my cases small and uh, grow up in uh, Boise. Uh, after, uh, uh, before uh, three years ago, I want made the uh, quilt, and uh, this quilt show my uh, three memory. Two memory is uh, my good memory, and here, uh, and uh, and here is my good memory, and here is uh, a show a sky, a sky is not uh, blue, and the uh, whole building is uh, broken. This is my bad memory. And uh, uh, he, this part show uh, University of Kabul. Uh, before I uh, study and uh, be in, uh, in oh my gosh, <laughs> oh 
What's up? Yeah. Oh. Go back. Go back? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's that middle. Yeah. <laughs> Test that. And uh, I study in the University of uh, Kabul uh, before uh, Taliban came in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, everything is good. All uh, ladies go to school and work as work and. Uh, go university, everything is good for ladies, for everybody. And uh, after that, Taliban came in Kabul and changed everything. Uh, every day is bomb and war, and the whole building is bur broke. This is sure like this. and. Uh, no school for lady, no uh, uh, university, all clothes, no work, no, uh, uh, every uh, lady can't go to the, uh, work and school and university. It's, uh, Taliban said, all stay home, no go, no more go work. And, uh, uh, this part show is my bad memory. One day I, uh, I went to outside and all people, all ladies uh, cover every, every body and face, uh, hand and everybody like that. Taliban uh, love this uh, uh, hijab. And somebody can't uh, uh, buy uh, this hijab because it's a little bit is expensive. And uh, wear uh, this hijab. This hijab is show highs and hands. Taliban doesn't like that. Uh, and uh, said, no wear like this hijab. And, uh, one day I stop in the, uh, uh, the bus, stop bus, and waiting for bus. And uh, one lady uh, wear this hijab and uh, stop near me. And uh, this time Taleb, the, uh, one car come and this, this uh, he is Taleb, he come with uh, web and uh, walk to me, uh, side me. I is scared because I uh, think uh, why he come uh, uh, and uh, walk uh, to me. And uh, bad is stop in the, near the uh, lady and start uh, hurt head, start head and. Uh, too much hit this lady, and this time bus coming, and I uh, went to bus. I locked the uh, uh, bus window. Uh, this lady fall down the uh, floor and uh, uh, said, uh, "Stop hit! I can't. Uh, please stop! I uh, uh, never come at, uh, outside uh, home." I stay home. I uh, never uh, uh, wear like this uh, hijab. And uh, uh, bad is he not stop her head and head, head, and head. To maybe diet he is because every day a lot lady uh, head like this happen it like this and diet uh, and. Uh, after that, I uh, talked with my, I told my husband, uh, we can't uh, stay here because as uh, I have uh, five daughters, all need uh, uh, 
uh, study and uh, uh, maybe uh, um, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my husband said it's okay because uh, I want to go to in Pakistan, uh, but I ha have a bear and uh, stay for seven months with Taliban because my husband bear is uh, long like uh, Taliban and go and went to Pakistan with my kids and my husband. Uh, and uh, for three years, uh, stay in Pakistan. Uh, but it's a very difficult uh, life in Pakistan because um, Pakistan school is very uh, expensive for uh, everybody because everybody is refugee, is my uh, refugee, and can't uh, uh, make money for uh, kids for uh, uh, school. And uh, b uh, after three years, I came in Boise. The uh, sport show in uh, Boise. Oh, yes. Uh, show Boise, and all my kids grew up in Boise and uh, mm, uh, finished school and go to BCU. Uh, and BCU and my kids, uh, uh, my four uh, daughters uh, um, graduate from uh, three uh, kids, uh, um, my three daughters graduate from uh, BCU and uh, my uh, four daughter graduate from uh, uh, University of Idaho. Uh, he, she has uh, studied uh, uh, fashion design in uh, Moscow. And my uh, uh, oldest daughter, uh, um, she studied uh, business. She has a master degree. And my second daughter has a master degree for, uh, from uh, uh, finance. And uh, uh, my uh, third daughter uh, uh, has a bachelor degree uh, for from uh, uh, management uh, like like management business like that and uh, my whole daughters now uh, uh, she went to uh, she go to school uh, go to uh, Lewiston in, uh, University, uh, she is study business too, and uh, too great. And uh, uh, I, I'm so happy because I wish my kids uh, educate. And now Hall is educate and I'm so happy. I love Boise because <laughs> all my kids grew up over there and uh, uh, my kids love Boise and the like. That. Thank you. Tell us how you came to Artisans for Hope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I forget. <laughs> Three years ago, I Mm, uh, maybe six years ago, I stopped work and stay home. And uh, I'm so tired because 10 years I have a hard job before never I didn't art work because I, I was teacher and I love my job. And here in Boise, I have a hard work for 10 years. I'm so tired and uh, uh, I stay home. And uh, uh, for three years I stay home and I have uh, the, the pre depressed and uh, uh, every time cry and uh, uh, thinking about everything, about my family, why not together, live, 
uh, together and like that. And uh, my friends came in my house. She said, uh, every time you uh, work outside and now stay home, always you uh, watch TV because you sat. If you want to go to uh, artisan for help, it, it's a uh, good uh, place. Uh, you work with people and uh, maybe you better. I said, okay, I go. <laughs> I went to, uh, uh, three years ago, I went to uh, Artisan for Hope, and I made the first uh, sewing, I made the quilt. Yeah. <laughs> like that, thank you. Yes. I, I'm going to add to that that Maria came to Artisans for Hope and uh, knits, crochets, sews, helps other students. The One of the values I see is this group, uh, the very diverse group, are helping each other understand how to sew, how to do the, do the various crafts we're doing. And Maria is... Uh, on our board of directors now. So, and we have a paid woman who, a uh, paid uh, refugee who is our production manager, a uh, woman who was a, uh, a model once upon a time and uh, lived in the Congo and had to leave the Congo under a uh, very difficult situation, lost her husband. Her husband went with her, went back to get other family members and was killed. And uh, she and her daughter are now here. Her daughter has uh, a business making clothes out of African fabrics, clothes that are very fashionable for the uh, young people, I, I think it's a young, fashionable uh, thing for people here in the United States. And uh, so this, the sewing is important to a lot of, uh, has helped some of the people get, uh, get jobs and things. But anyways, I wanted to mention that Maria is on our board of directors and we, we believe that we need, we would like to have another um, refugee on the board. We had another one and she left town. People do leave to find better jobs other places uh, and maybe less so as the economy gets better. But uh, so if you have questions for me, for Maria, for Stephen, please. No, not, I mean, not a big population, and that, that's really the, 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 the benefit of something uh, of an organization like Artisans for Hope is that th there are, you know, Boise is a resettlement city, and, and there's, there's uh, you know, quite a few refugees there, but they're tiny, tiny little populations, and um, in and among themselves, they're kind of, they're kind of hard to track, and but the thing that Joan was kind of talking about is that Art Artisans for Hope has become this kind of meeting spot, this community Super. center mm -hmm. for all of them. So you get these tiny little populations that that go there and become one, you know, one population. So you have the Somalis, you have the Congolese, you have the Bhutanese, the Nepalese, uh, the Afghanis. Um, 
And I don't know if you've ever had any. No. Yeah. No, we, we've never had any Hmong, but we've had, uh, let's say, a diverse group for a while. We had some Burmese or yeah. Myanmar. And, uh, and if they come with special, with talents in a special area, we, we can look for volunteers. We're to, we are just about totally volunteer run. So it makes it for an interesting organization and interesting management. We have a half-time executive director and a half-time production manager. And if we can find volunteers, we have enough space to do a lot of different types of workshops. And, uh, and, and set up classes, and if we can just do the timing, uh, that's always a possibility. So we're open to that, but, but we haven't seen that. We've, we've had some requests to do some weaving, but we really don't have the space to set up looms. And there have been Burmese weavers. <laughs> yeah. With, their, with makeshift, makeshift looms. Mm. Um, yeah, they, they use backstrap looms. Yeah. But w we just don't. We don't have the space for that. We're, we're lucky that we have the space we do now because of a combination of circumstances that led us to a, uh, to a landlord who is very supportive of what we're doing. And yes, it took a little work to convince him, but, uh, but he's supportive and he's on our, our committee looking for more investment <laughs> so, so so you know there's opportunities but we're a small organization volunteer run and I'll see if I can let's see reach into my contacts and, you know the very yeah. best time Steve that you could be here would be Renaissance Fair weekend it seems to me it's kind of uh, <laughs> this weekend um, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, April 30th May 1st mm -hmm. Oh, the, you said something that made me think that I didn't mention. Not all of our students are women. We do have a few men, which with some of the cultural differences, um, there are some women who want to be mostly covered mm -hmm. when men are present, and they will take their face cloths off when they're not. But, you know, it's okay. It's okay. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's a. Uh, it's one of about. Okay. It's one of about. It's one of about 200, and I'm not exactly sure when Boise was first uh, chosen as a resettlement city. It has three resettlement agencies within the city and another agency, which is sort of uh, a coordination uh, a agency. We have the Idaho Office of Refugees, and uh, which coordinates among all of the different agencies, plus some other uh, other groups that are out there. It's not a government agency. It's, it's supported by a lot of government money. But we have uh, the three uh, resettlement agencies we have are the International Rescue Committee, uh, Agency for New Americans, and no, no, and, and, and. <laughs> And the other one. <laughs> How's that? Um, but Steve, do you have all that in your office? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll just get your email. Uh, you mean the, uh, the contacts? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they would more, much more so than I would. Yeah, yeah and, but, but uh, when bo the, the city is chosen partly because 
of at the time the opportunity the the people who are living there and their openness to uh, have refugees the opportunity to find jobs for the refugees and these would be entry level jobs usually not requiring uh, knowledge of English to a large extent and uh, the the United Nations and the Department of State each year decide on how many refugees will be taken in the United States and where they will go and these aid they all work with these agencies and many of the refugees have no choice in where they go Maria was able to come to Boise and chose to come to Boise because she had a niece here who said, come to Boise. And, and the, the powers that be will respect that and, and bring families together. They otherwise, like uh, the lady I talked about, Bima, she just was told, you're coming to Boise. And and I've heard the story from many others. They had no idea what a Boise was. So, uh, but they... <laughs> right. But uh, there's a lot of information. If you go online, the Idaho Office for Refugees has... A huge amount of information. It will will tell you how many came from what country to where, and uh, and actually some background information on how all of this is decided. And I'd recommend going to that Idaho Office for Refugees. It's easy to find online, and it's a, it's a wealth of information. So, yes. Uh, I'll let you know what I know from a personal experience, and perhaps Maria would want to uh, answer also. But in Boise, the city of Boise itself has been very welcoming, and the city of Boise has done a strategic plan on refugees and trying to bring, bring together the various people, groups, uh, agencies, whomever is working with refugees. They're looking at housing, they look at, uh, at what's available, resources that are available. The schools have uh, special programs that address refugees. And I think Boise is a very welcoming city, and they've worked at it. Now, I know that there are people out there who are not welcoming. <laughs> And I know that uh, I unfortunately personally know some. <laughs> I, but I haven't really experienced it in, in Boise so much. I, I know in North Idaho and in the Twin Falls area, there's some people who say we, we don't, w refugees, we don't, it's not that we don't like refugees, we just don't think that you ought to be spending money on our taxpayer money on paying for refugees and spending all this money on, on, or giving for the government to give money to these agencies that are just there to get the money. And, you know, that's so far from the truth as to what, what agencies are doing and what they do with the money. It is not. <laughs> Coeur d'Alene area. No, I don't. I don't think of Moscow as North Idaho. <laughs> you are north of Boise, but hey, <laughs> but but uh, it's more the Coeur d'Alene 
and North area. And what was your experience like when you moved to Boise? Did you find it yeah. friendly or did you find it difficult? Would you like to would you like to tell them what it was like for you and your family when you moved? She's had a very good experience, and um, but uh, yeah, but there are there are cases like the international market being, being yeah. yeah yeah the international market uh, fire uh, at first it was thought to be accidental but now they're saying it's arson so that's that's disturbing uh, and you know. When we go out as Artisans for Hope, we try to sell products, and we go out sometimes to you know, markets, or we have a table in front of American clothing a lot of uh, a, a p good part of the year. And people come by, they don't know that there is a large refu refugee population in the Boise area. And so what we feel is we are educating people and we do get comments occasionally that, why are you um, do-gooders out there helping refugees and not uh, the veterans or the poor or any, any other category of people that they think ought to be given priority? And my response is it's not an either-or. It's just not an either-or. and. Some things have been very positive. In, in um, December, Curtis Steigers did a, a uh, couple of, uh, of uh, performances in Idaho to support the, a uh, homeless group, uh, interfaith, interfaith Sanctuary. And uh, they made it a point to come to us and get some of our products to sell there. And, and we let them get part of the profit from the, from the products. And then they use that as, you know, we're working together to solve some problems. So, you know, there's, there's some things that are really good. And there's always people who why? Right. You know, we take in 70,000 refugees into the United States a year. Yeah. So. A large population. You mean in in terms of Boise, I, I I say a large population because Boise itself takes in about seven or eight hundred uh, refugees a year, and that's uh, and that's that to me is a, a large population when you think of it together. I mean, it's, they're all everyone is spread out, but uh, so yeah, so that's that's what I'm talking about. 
smaller population in Twin Falls. Yeah. I don't know the numbers. Yeah. It's something like 300, I think. Yeah. So. So. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming yeah. and seeing what we're doing and listening. We really like to get our story out and the stories of the refugees. <laughs> That's right. Yes, and the owner of the of the American Clothing is Lil Couric. <laughs> I knew it would come back eventually. <laughs> I was at, asked earlier, and uh, and she she has been very supportive. There are there are people who have just been extraordinarily supportive of our efforts. And again, we're we're just small, but but we do our little bit, and that thing. So, and I and I want to tell you my first experience with refugees when I was when I was uh, four years old. I lived in upstate New York in Oswego, New York. And Oswego became the temporary home of the only group of refugees from World War II that our government ever let into the country. We had about uh, just under 1,000. And they lived in an old army barracks 10 blocks from where I grew up. And one little girl was in my kindergarten class. <laughs> I'm showing my age and all of this, but uh, uh, it, it's a story that is, is not uh, told, heard or told that much, but the interesting thing was there was only one shipload of refugees came to the United States, and when the war was over, they were told they had to leave, and the person who put this all together said, that isn't right, and it took an act of Congress to work it out that they were able to leave, go into Canada, and come back in legally. But but it was only one. So we're, we're doing a little more now. But so well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks again for coming.